Our Father. Our Father. Who art in heaven. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth. On earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this night. Give us this night. A daily rest. A daily rest. And forgive us our trespasses. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those. As we forgive those. Who trespass against us. Who trespass against us. And lead us not. Lead us not, dear Lord. Into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us. But deliver us. From the evil one. From the evil one. For that is the kingdom of power way forever and ever. Good night, God. Good night, God. This is called on October 27th. As you become increasingly aware of my presence, you find it easier to discern the way you should go. This is one of the practical benefits, practical benefits of living close to me. Instead of wondering about what is on the road ahead or worrying about what you should do if or when, you can concentrate on staying in communication with me. While when you actually arrive at your cho a choice point, I will show you which direction to go. Many people are so preoccupied with future plans and decisions that they fail to see choices they need to make today. Without any conscious awareness, they make their habitual responses. People who live this way find a dullness feeding into their lives. They sleepwalk through their days, following well-worn paths of routine. I, the creative universe, am the most creative being imaginable. I will not leave you circling in deeply ruddled paths. Instead, I will lead you along the fresh trails of adventure, revealing to you things you did not know, staying in communication with me, Following, follow my guiding presence. Psalm 12, verse 8, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And Jesus listens. The daily, daily devotional prayers of peace, joy, and hope. And Jesus listens to these. My great God, teach me how to approach the problems with a light touch. When my mind moves towards a problem area, I tend to focus on that situation so intensely that I lose sight of you. I pit myself against the difficulty as if I must conquer it immediately. My mind gears up for battle. My body comes tense and anxieties. Unless I achieve total victory, I feel defeated. I know there's a better way when problems start overshadowing my thoughts. Please prompt me to bring the matter to you. Talk, take, talking it over with you, examine it in the light of your presence. This puts some much needed space between me and my concern, enabling me to see it more, from more of your per perspective. Sometimes I even end up laughing at myself for being so serious about something that is insignificant. I realize I will always face trouble in this world, but more importantly, I will always have you with me, equipping me with, to handle whatever I encounter. Help me to approach the problems with light, a light touch by viewing them in your everlasting light, in your brilliant name, Jesus. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. He is a miraculous, a miraculous God. 
And I know that from experience. I was uh, really uh, awake this morning, really early, and I was having some difficulty time being able to go back to sleep. Well, one of the things I do is I pray, but I had a lot on my mind and questions that I was asking God. And they were really special questions. And I kept praying about them and praying about them. Yeah, because sometimes I get a little discouraged. But as I went to church, I was the greeter. I gre greeted people when they come into church. And then I went into the worship service. During the whole worship service, praise be to God, Jesus was speaking. Not only to me, but to Eva, but then all of a sudden, he spoke to me with our love song. And that's what I call our love song. And the minute that I heard that song, as I was singing, Jesus filled my heart with so much love and he helped me to realize that it's gonna be okay, that I am doing the things that he has called me to do. I'm a little unspoken certain ways but after the wonderful, wonderful love that he showed me when he spoke to me with words in music, he called me to give a message, a spiritual message. And it was interpreted by the pastor. It was really, really, I was really, really honored to be able to be chosen to speak in tongues, which is a language I do not know, and give a message to the people in the congregation. And I thank God for all that he does for me. And he can do it for you. You have no idea if you don't know God or Jesus, Jesus is most important because he came to earth and suffered on the cross for all of us so that we could be united with God again. So I'm telling you, it's worth it. It will bring you joy even in the saddest times to know that God is with you all the time. And that was a prayer from God. The ministry continues. Such perceptive and authoritative teaching, authoritative. teaching has obviously won the attention of the multitudes who have been long been delusioned by the empty ritualism and superficially of their present religious religious system. As Jesus fame continues to spread, John the Baptist sends a message to Jesus to asking for final confirmation of his messiahship. John is perhaps scenting an impending death and undoubtedly wants to reassure himself that his own ministry has not been in vain. 
Jesus sends a message of reassurance and praise, praises John for his courage and dedication as a servant of God. No doubt by this time, the religious leaders are also becoming increasingly aware of Jesus' extraordinary power. Instead of accepting it as divine, they accuse Jesus of having power from Satan. What follows is a scathing rebuke of the Pharisees for their disbelief in hypocrisy and an urgent call for repentance. The events leading up to this confrontation begin to unfold as Jesus makes his way from the mountains back to Compertium. Century slave centurions lay peeled. Would you literally see all this to the people who are listening? He answered Capernaum, there a centurion servant who was mastered by the highly, was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him. I was going to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. This man deserves to have you do this, because he loves our nation and has built our synagogues. Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the security of his St. Prince, he said to him, Lord, do not talk to yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That's why I do not even consider myself worried to come to you. But say the word my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority. But so is under me. I tell this one, go. And he goes within the at one come. And he comes. I say to my servant, do this and he does it. And does Jesus it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such a great faith even in Israel. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take your places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside. Be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go and let it be done, just as you believed. And it would, as his servant was healed at that moment. Then he, then the men who had been sent to return to the houses and found the servant well. Widow's son raised. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd along with him, he approached the town gate. A dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and he was a widow. A large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her and said, Don't cry. And he went up and touched the fire the, the they were carrying him on. And the bear stood still. He said, Young man, I tell you, get up. Then the dead man sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were filled with awe. And praise God. A great father has appeared among us, they said. God is going to help his people. 
this news about Jesus uh, spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. John the Baptist questions. John the Baptist told them all about these things, calling two of them. He said to them to the Lord to ask, Are you the man who is to come, or should we expect someone else? When a man came to Jesus, he said, John the Baptist said to us to ask, Are the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have prophecy are cleansed. The deaf hear, the deaf are that are raised, and the good news proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble or on account of me. Jesus praises John. After John's messengers left, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No. Those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxury are in palaces. What do you go out to see? A prophet? Yes. I tell you and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women then, there is no one greater than John. Yet the one who had least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and violent people have been reading it. For all the prophets in the law, prophesied until John, and you are one to accept it. He is the Elijah who was to come. Whoever has ears, let them hear. All the people, even as the tax collectors, when they heard Jesus' words, acknowledged that God's way was right because they had been baptized by John. But the Pharisees and the experts in the laws rejected God's purpose for themselves because they had not been baptized by John. Jesus repro reproves rejection. Jesus went on to say, to what then can I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to each other. We played the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang, the, sang a dirge, and you did not cry. But John the Baptist came neither eating bread or drinking wine, and you say, he has a demon? The son of man came eating and drinking, and you say he is a glutton and a drunkard? a friend of tax collectors, tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom pro is proved right by all her children. Anointing by a sinful woman. Then one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to dinner with him. He went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in the town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came with came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weep, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisees had invited him saw this, he said, if this man were a prophet, he would know who's touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. 
Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denaria, the other 50. Neither of them had money to pay him back. So he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will he love, will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the biggest debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from time to time, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you that her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven, little loves little. And then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. Other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sin? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The woman provides support. After this, Jesus traveled about one town, from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons come out, Jonah, the wife of Shaza, Shuza, the manager of Herod's household, Suzanne, and many other others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. Jesus accused. Then Jesus entered the house, and again the crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not able to eat. Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute. Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. All the people were astonished and said, Could this be the son of David? But then the Pharisees heard it, and they said, It's only by Beelzebub that the prince of, de the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your people drive them out? So then... They will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God I drive out de demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? Then he can plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me Gatters, blasphemy, contem condemned. And so I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven. But blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven forgiven but anyone either in his this age or the age to come he said this because they were saying he has an impure spirit make a tree good and its fruit will be good or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad for a tree is recognized by its fruit you blood of vipers brood, you brood of vipers you brood of vipers how can you who are evil say anything good? 
for the mouth speaks what the heart is full. A good man brings good things out of good, good stored up in him. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in. But I tell you that everyone will have to give account to the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. But by your words, you'll be acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him. And they said, he is out of his mind. Request for proof rebuked. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asked for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. As for Jonah, was was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be there three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Nimrah will stand up at judgment with the generation and condemn, and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now something greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise at the judgment with its generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom. And now something greater than Solomon is here. Ah, uh, this is what we need too today. Need for moral reform. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through an arid places seeking the re rest and does not find it. When it says, I will return to the house I left, when it arrives and he finds the house unoccupied, swept clean and put in order, then it goes in and takes it with seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. As Jesus was saying these things, a woman in the crowd cried out, Blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nursed you. And he replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Jesus tells true kinship. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to them, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciple, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Inner righteousness. No one lights a lamp and puts it in place where it will be hidden, or under a bowl instead they put it on its stand so that those who come may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body, and when your eyes are healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when they are unhealthy, your body is also full of darkness. See to it then that the light within you is not darkness. Therefore, if your whole body is full of light and no part of it dark, it will be just as full of light as when the lamp shines its light on you. Heavenly Father, Lord, the best in the name of Jesus, and the devil has no more power over me. Do not believe any of his lies. Always remember, the devil operates the power of blind signs and bake wonders. <clears throat> thirst, and we have a thirst for God. Come all of you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy the wine and milk without money, without cost. Isaiah 55, 1. Thirst is a God-given sensation to let us know we need a drink. Under normal circumstances, the solution for the thirst problem is, sim is really simple. Just take a drink. But spiritual thirst 
is also God-given. He creates us to be satisfied at only one fountain, and that's Jesus himself, the living water. Without him, we are barren and dry. Jesus told the woman at the well that she drank, that if she drank the water he gave her, she would never thirst again. He spoke of himself. Isaiah 55, 1 reveals the way to satisfy a spiritual thirst. Just come to Jesus. Money isn't needed. The only cost is surrender. Drink of the wine of the Holy Spirit and drink of the word. You will be satisfied. Are you feeling spiritually dry today? Have you been too busy to eat and drink pop properly to satisfy your soul? Jesus, forgive me for neglecting to drink from the fountain of your word. I need a fresh drink of living water. Fill me up today and clench my thirst. I got so filled up today with the thir with the water of Jesus. And he know I was he knew I was thirsty. He really did for him. And that's what I got filled with. And I was very happy just that I had time to to be feeling good for a, for a little while, which was good because what I in his presence is that's where I am strong and that's where nothing evil can touch me. His name, and we sang about his name today. A tower that is stronger than any man-made fortress and a large enough to see from a distance, even if we've lost our way. His name will never fall. His name will never be defeated. His name will never be reduced to rubble. Jesus is your name. And this is what God will say to us tonight. There is power in the name of my son, Jesus. Pause for a minute. Say his name over and over. Jesus, 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 Jesus. When you f face the obstacles today, let his name echo in your heart and be exalted through your breath, Jesus. There's no temptation he doesn't understand. There's no pain that is worse than what he experienced. There's no loss of comfort or reputation that he fully doesn't comprehend. There is no one who knows the anguish of a broken heart the way he does. And the enemy trembles at the name of Jesus. When the spirit of fear comes upon you, threatening to consume you, concentrate on this truth. The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him are safe. Envision putting on mountain shoes and making a beeline for my strong tower all the way to safety, speaking the name again. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Satan can't touch me. I live by the power of the name of Jesus. I live by the power of the name of Jesus. God elevates him to a place of the highest honor and gave him the name above all names. That name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2, 9 to 11. And one day everyone's knee shall bow. And they will acknowledge Jesus. <sighs> I can't tell you. It's an experience that you need to feel for yourself. To literally feel Jesus, Jesus wrapping his arms around you. And letting you know that you're going to be okay. Uh, there is a song on uh, Caleb at times. And you can also get the song on uh, on uh, YouTube. You just look it up. It's a Christian song. Uh, it, you're going to be okay. I recommend it. That's one of my really favorites. It seems like it gets played on the radio, uh, K-Love Radio, uh, 
just when I need it, when things are really, really bad. And my other favorite one that I like to play is I'm just a nobody. We can't play the songs that I want to play. They don't allow it uh, for some reason. But look it up yourself. Look up the on, on YouTube. I'm just a nobody Christian song. It ministers to you. And it will maybe God will even speak to you because God speaks through music and words. So tonight I'm going to say what is so important in these last days. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Open it up. Let him come in. Have a relationship, not a religion with him. You won't be sorry. It will change your life. And honestly, for the better. There still will be trouble. There's still things that you're going to, you know, go through. But let me tell you. He allows you to go through them and gives you the strength so that if in, in your walk with God, that somebody that you know is so desperate, so desperate that you can share what God did for you because you went through it. Because I can't tell you how many people that I have shared with the fact I know what darkness is. I know when you feel like you're at the pit of hell, there's no hope, there's no nothing. I know that dark, dark place. And thank God that he came along, plucked me right out of it and changed my life. So may God bless you and keep you, and may his light shine upon you tonight. Have a good night. Have a good night's sleep. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, take care of yourselves. Good night and amen.